Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with New York-based jazz musician and educator Daniel Bennett on the 2021 Music Revival. We caught up with him on February 3rd, 2020 to talk about the COVID-19 world, new gigs, how he's staying busy, the reemergence of New York, and so much more. Enjoy. Daniel, it's great to catch up. I think we caught up pretty close after the COVID pandemic started back in April, so it's great to catch back up with you. Oh, man, it's great to be here. Yeah, I think we spoke maybe back in April. Which seems like years from 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 now, so, I mean. Yeah, in a good way, yeah, in a good way though, right? Isn't that nice? Because I think the last time we spoke, <laughs> you and I were kind of going like, okay, because I think you and I are two very optimistic, positive people. So we're both kind of like, you know, all right, let's, let's, let's keep this conversation flowing, moving forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, and here we are, man. I mean, it's a new yeah. year. It's January. No, it's February. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and and you, you know what's funny? I was looking back. My first interview with you, we did right around the time that the, the, that the, um, the Chiefs got into postseason. And now oh, wow. look at this, man. Super Bowl. And we're speaking oh. again. So I'm like, good luck charm. You are totally. But the one thing I did say last year after the Chiefs won is that, you know, we went to the parade, which largest last largest gathering on the planet before COVID hit, and we had this fifty year hex. And I'm like, uh oh, we won, we won the Super Bowl, we had the we had the parade, and now the world shut down. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but it's coming but full circle the, now. Yes, it has. Yep. But that's always the fear of the Chiefs. You know, I watched my dad for years watch that mm. that punt go to the right or left or something didn't work out and he was like you know uh. his, his, his famous quote to me was when you have a relationship with the chiefs you marry misery <laughs> so that's <laughs> what he did. and i thought about yo him you sound like a buffalo bills fan yeah exactly <laughs> it's like the carousel and it just picks up people and drops you off but i would love for him to have seen at least you know one of these two years because so many people in this town, because when we went back in the 60s, you know, it was the it was the glory days. But I will tell you, you know, it was very surreal. I didn't quite absorb that we did win it. Mm. But when everything in the world kind of changed, surreal became real. And I was like, all right, we did it. It's good. Let's go. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Dude, so, I'm, I'm pumped, man. Hey, you know, and say what you will about Tom Brady. I will say this. Here's a, here's a positive spin on Tom Brady. I lived in Boston for a long time, so I don't I don't despise Tom Brady. It, there's a little bit of a normalcy now that Tom Brady is in the Super Bowl again. So you know, but hey, go Chiefs! You know, I, I I am I am kind of a Chiefs fan after just kind of becoming friends with you and kind of like like listening to your show. I'm like, okay, Kansas City is an awesome town. They got great sports, amazing music. I'm like, I'm like I, I got to root for the Chiefs this year. I will tell you this. I appreciate that, and I will tell you one thing. For all the years that I have not liked Tom Brady, I actually respect him this year because he shut he shook that whole Bill Belichick on us, and it yeah. really is him because the the roster that's going for Tampa is the same roster they had last year, and they didn't get anywhere near the playoffs. So if you take mm. Tom Brady out of it, they aren't going. And you know, for being a Chiefs fan, you know, I don't want to say one way or another. I'm just so happy they're there. I am looking forward to how good it's going to be. But this Chiefs team is tough. And, and one of the things this year is they didn't have to score as many points as last year because so many parts are moving and they can do so many things. They're, they're a powerful team, but it's, it's so fun to take Miles and, and, and the kids out to see all the red and our Union Station's done up and, and there's all of these like photo opportunities. And just being a part of that kind of urban circus of, of being in something that genuinely, it's like, after they won the AFC Championship, I went out on the back porch and there were fireworks going off everywhere. And I thought how refreshing that was from November because it was political and everybody had one side or the other. And it was like everybody came together and there was no side. Oh. It was Kansas City and that's it. And it just it it's felt wonderful. Yeah. Oh, man, that's yeah. so cool. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I'm excited. It's going to be a great game. You know, I grew up in yeah. Rochester, New York, so I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. So I had to endure the Bills in the early 90s uh, when oh, Scott man. Norwood tragically blew the, the field goal, which, of course, you know, I don't hold it against him, but, you know, that's always a thing now. Then I moved to Boston, and Bill Buckner, that was the thing in Boston. Oh, okay, the oh, ball went under yeah. Bill Buckner's legs, and 
I don't know yeah. if Kansas City has one of those like folklore elements with you know is there a tragic story I'm sure there is in KC sports it's not popping into my mind but it would be Miss Field oh, good. from Nick Lowry it, it definitely oh. um, <laughs> really yeah. okay yeah it's always a it's, field goal man dude you, know, yeah, you gotta feel sorry is. for these guys you know the whole team basically is blowing it and then they call the poor uh-huh. guy out to come kick a field goal at the end or something yeah and somehow yeah. save the day and then they blame him if he doesn't make the shot <laughs> it's it it's it and everybody it's like he's he's kind of the you know the low rent guy on the team but that's the one that's the trophy you know i think last oh. year when Mahomes was in Denver and he popped his knee out of place and the trainer came out and popped it back in, that's the guy that should have totally gotten the trophy in the ring. Yeah, because he came out. I mean, Kansas City was like, we were devastated watching that. And that guy came out and he just grabbed his leg and within minutes he popped that thing back into place. And you see no. Patrick you're like wincing on the ground. But that's the guy that should have been lifted the highest when we had that uh Oh man! Year. Okay, I, yeah, I don't remember that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, it's like you know, it's like here's a musical connection. It's like the bass player. You know, nobody appreciates the bass player until they're not there, <laughs> and then everyone's like, "I need some bass in this group," you know, without a doubt. Well, <sighs> hey, it, it's great to catch back up. So I guess I want to start off here, and we, you had mentioned that you had new music coming out. How have you been doing? How have you been kind of creatively keeping yourself going just kind of a little bit of a dialogue on what's been going on since april and we're at february 2021 hey man i'm i'm taking a page out of the joe domino book and i'm just out there every day pushing through it i mean you've probably done a thousand interviews in the last year (laughs) i mean which which i love that's like super inspiring to see so i'm just out there i'm playing every day i'm playing outdoor music in new york city i live on the upper east side of manhattan and we have outdoor venues i'm sure kansas city are you guys kind of doing that too some outdoor dining indoor you do both yep yep do. absolutely yeah yeah so here it's 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 uh it's outdoor dining although on on valentine's day we're going to go back to indoor but whatever I, I, don't, I actually don't even really pay attention to a lot of that back and forth stuff because I'm out every single day, and there's jazz clubs that are doing music outside. Uh, Tommy Jazz in Midtown Manhattan, I'll be playing there tonight with Kevin Haley and uh, Coco Bermejo on drums. They have live music. It's in Midtown outside. Uh, they have a beautiful outdoor setup. They've been featured in the New York Times as like a go-to location for dining. And I've been playing at Tommy Jazz for the last decade. I actually played there about a month after that club opened uh, back in 2010, so they're still going they're going strong. Uh, there's a place called Gertrude Cafe on the Upper West Side that I've done some stuff for outside. The Canary Club downtown did outdoor music for a long time. I, I think they took a month off. They'll reopen because the indoor dining is going to start up. So it, it's a little confusing to keep track of who's open, you know, who, who's doing what. But so I'm out there playing. You know, we've got heat lamps, we've got hand warmers. I, I, I didn't, I didn't stop at all. I mean, I, I not even in the beginning. I was like, okay. Just keep going. I mean, I always tell people, the world is your stage. Stand on the earth. If you believe in gravity, then you're good. Stand on the earth and play. You know, you can play in an yeah. open field. You can play in a street corner, play at an outdoor venue, play on a rooftop. My kids actually learned to ride their bikes on the roof of our building in Manhattan back in May. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, awesome. it's classic, man. We went up to the roof of our building with bicycles. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, I do take them out. Off the roof from time to time. We go out a lot. We go to Central Park every day. We we, we do biking elsewhere, but you know they learn on their bikes up there. So, but I'm also doing live streaming every week. I do a live stream concert with Coco Bermejo at his studio. He plays drums and keyboard. I do all the woodwinds, and every week we blast out a live stream show to a new venue somewhere in the world. So we've done stuff. We did a concert for the Fusiner Museum in Florida, the Bonnet House Museum, Nashua Public Library, the Miami Dade Library. We just did a Zoom concert for Miami Dade. Every week is like a different venue that we broadcast out to, usually on Facebook Live or Zoom. Zoom is kind of a, an interesting beast. I, I, it's something we all love to hate. Uh, I certainly, I, I always make fun of Zoom on, on, online. I, I kind of hate Zoom, but I, I figured out how to make it work pretty well, and I know that people use it and people go tune in to, to watch concerts. So we do Zoom concerts, even though I have a love-hate relationship with it. So it's good. It's good. I mean, I'm I'm very busy, and I'm teaching at the New York Jazz Academy in Times Square, and I've got students coming back in person, and some are staying online. Some I do Skype lessons 
and I'm teaching at the Bloomingdale School of Music on the Upper West Side, all remote teaching, but it's private lessons. And actually, about six months ago, um, uh, Ken Jen Juilliard hired me to, to do some teaching and consulting for them. That's the global branch of the Juilliard School here in New York City. So I started doing, we're rolling out a new music ed program in Singapore that I'll be teaching at remotely from my studio in New York. So I'm doing a lot of stuff with them. Like everyone, you're just like trying a million things. I mean, we recorded an album in July. I think we were one of the first groups to go into the studio when the studio was open in New York. My producer, MP Quo, uh, wrote me and said, she, she's like, dude, you know, the studio opens tomorrow. You guys should just like make an album. So we, we, we recorded it. It's done. It's mastered. And it's interesting. I'm getting a lot of insights from some of your shows because everyone's got albums and different stories about how they're putting out music. And I'm like trying to figure out the best time to release it. It'll be sometime this year, but it, 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 I guess it depends on, on factors. And, and I think that's the interesting part of this is that everyone does have a different story. And I'm starting to feel like, why not now? You know, I mean, everybody's right. needing music. No one's going to be able to tour for a while anyways in a traditional sense. So it's right. kind of like, let's just bring the joy and put it out there. But, you know, you're in the hotbed. You're in the epicenter of jazz in the, in the universe. What do you see as we move on and things get more and more hopeful in not only the country but the world? What do you see as what I like to call the revival of live music? How do you think it's going to unfold this year? Oh, I think it's happening already. I can see it every day. Something gets peeled away and someone's out there playing <laughs> a new a new person. <laughs> not just me or not just... I mean, there's a, believe me, there's other musicians that have been out there uh, you know, not just me in the city, but I see more and more now who are out playing. It's happening every day. You can see more people coming out all across the city and across the country. On your show, I hear a lot about the artists all over the country talking about this, how there's going to be a new appreciation for music, a deep love, a connection to music. I mean, you know, you, you even now, you hear someone playing music anywhere, everyone stops and listens. People are deeply connected to music. Yeah, it's a source of normalcy for people. I mean, I used to sit on my front step back in April. I would just practice long tones, and people would stop and, like, shoot cell phone video. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not even, you know, you know not even warmed up and I'm just like kind of messing around and people people would stop because people just want to feel connected to humanity. People are taking lessons all over the world. I mean, I my teaching studio is kind of maxed out right now just because everyone wants so badly to, to learn and grow. But I mean, every day I see something new. I always say like, you know, if you did something, if you resumed one new activity today, you're, you're undoing the new normal. And I love that. Like we're, we're bringing back the old normal, you know, which is yeah. which is what we should be trying to do. Yeah. So I see great yeah. things. I mean, I told you. I mean, Birdland just raised half a million dollars on uh, GoFundMe yeah. and to keep that venue nice and strong. They did some fundraising. The West Bank Cafe in Manhattan, another great theater venue, raised about a million bucks. They did it in like a month. So people are like giving money like crazy. Smalls is raising money constantly. I think Smalls pretty much has just had an open donation source you know that you could just give money to from the beginning which is beautiful and uh you know yeah. blue notes live streaming the village vanguard is live streaming they're all doing their own thing uh the ones that can stay outside like tommy jazz a few of these are doing the outdoor music it's exciting i mean uh, look sports is coming back it's all coming back so but i felt like this even at the beginning i didn't actually really walk around thinking to myself that life was over. I, I actually felt from the beginning, like, you know, if you put your mind to it, you, you find an, as I say, find an open lane. There's a lot of open lanes right now. If you're a musician, find an open lane and just go. Make an album, write, write a symphony, do something, you know, anything. There's so many open lanes that you can jump in because people are, are, some people, unfortunately, are still kind of hiding under their bed. But a lot of people are not now and they're really, musicians are pushing forward. So, those are the, I got friends who are writing books. I just did a gig with Rob Mitzner. He's a great drummer. He's writing a drum book. I'm sure. I mean, it's a lot of the people on your show you've spoken with are putting out, uh, you know, educational DVDs, books, things like that. So it's cool. I but I never really shut myself. I, I never really canceled myself in any way at the beginning. I mean, I'm sure you're the you're the same way. You just said, all right, look, I have to just keep pushing this music out. I don't always look at things in the sense of like, well. 
you know, in April it was this, and then it became this, and then it got better. And it, for me, I'm like, look, my mindset is, has not really changed from the beginning. But it, it is exciting to see her across the world. I did an interview with Sam Stein. She's a great jazz journalist. She's a uh, chief international editor at the Jazz Journalists Association. And we did an article together, actually, for Jazz Views, great website. And we got to share a lot of ideas in this article. And it was actually very comforting to know, like, in, in England and other places. Actually, another one, this, this website called The Music and the Myth, it's based in Romania. They, they wrote me, I think it was like the day of the lockdown back in March, and they wanted to do a, like some kind of Skype interview, I think we did. I realized like this is a global thing, so like there's some comfort in that, just knowing that everyone's in the same boat in a way. It, it's not just like it just hit a little part of the you know New York or something. It's, it's everywhere, so that's comforting to know that we can all find ways to, to push back together. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it is, and and this is this is one of the reasons why I like interviewing you. You're very optimistic. You are you are definitely carrying that torch for the music community, and I want to keep this dialogue going. So when when here, hopefully towards maybe the summer again, let's talk. Let's keep this dialogue going. But I'm glad that we're keeping the keeping the ideas flowing. And and thank you for what you're doing for jazz and for music. And and I appreciate the kind words and that you're listening to to my interview. So I appreciate it and uh, send my best to the family. I will, Joe, and, and thanks again for having me on the show, and uh, keep doing your thing. It's, it's all working, and it will all work out, I promise you. Yep. And, man, you know, Casey, man, go Chiefs. That's right. Let, yeah, we'll, we'll, maybe <laughs> we'll have to talk after that. <laughs> after, after Sounds Sunday, good. So. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Daniel for being a positive force in the world of jazz and beyond. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.